So the next presentation, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Damir uh, Duganzig. Uh, Damir is the uh, technical head for the talent development program of the DFB, uh, which is the, the, uh, the German FA. Um, Dan, Damir, previously he was a regional coordinator of the TD, uh, TDP and a research assistant at the University of Constance. Uh, he has a master's in sports science, um, a UEFA pro license, uh, and during the last 20 years has been head and assistant coach for uh, several regional and national uh, youth teams. So uh, I'd like to welcome uh, to the stage. So good morning and uh, thanks for the introduction. This picture was taken five years ago and it's my son. It's really my son. It was the moment just before his first game Going out from the locker room to the pitch, it was a gym, it was a uh, sports hall, and at the time it was a mixed feeling. Some butterflies in his tummy, a little of excitement, frightened, excitement. And at the time it was very special to him. And I'm asking you, do you remember the first time you entered the pitch and how it was for you? And I asked myself, do I remember? And honestly, I don't. I can't remember the moment. I remember the shorts I had. I remember the boots, but I can't, I can't memorize the, the feeling I had walking onto the pitch. And I knew the goals I score. I knew some uh, wins, some draws, many losses, <laughs> some injuries, penalties. Goals in the last minutes, but I didn't remember the moment, how it felt to be a kid and walking onto the pitch. And that's perhaps my message I want to give you. We talk about empathy. We talk about looking through the children's eyes. But even now in the middle 40s, for me, it's hard to think or to get inside the head of a kid and to know how it is, how, how to feel. And the experts about children's games, about kids' games, are the kids and not me. So that was my thing. So today we're talking about why tomorrow isn't like yesterday, why things changed. And perhaps as I worked at the university, I would have some thesis. Nowadays, I would have some hashtags for you. Um, so I hope there is some information I can give to you, how we are working, how we are developing our system in the German FA. And today there are two hearts beating in my chest. Uh, on the one hand, I'm a sucker dad, because uh, over the past five, six years, I observed yeah, the, the grassroots program in Germany because my kid, my son was playing there, and I'm a football coach working with the national teams, working for the FA. Uh, so you get today two sides of the story, uh, one from a parent and one from um, yeah, without the system or in the system. So two, two points. And when you're talking about change, when we're talking about developing the system, we always have to ask ourselves, okay, what point of view do we have? And for whom are we doing the things we do? And working for the FA, normally we're talking about, okay, what is the best for the FA? What is the best for our clubs? But <clears throat> the, over the past years, I think we move forward. And nowadays we ask ourselves, what is best for our children? So everything we're talking about, it's about bait fish. And the bait... <laughs> is for the fish to like and not for the fishermen. So every time you're talking about things you want to change, talk about for whom are you doing this and from which point of view you reflect on those things. So I already told about the children's eyes we're talking about. So if we're putting our kids in the center of our, of our um, thoughts, what does it mean? How are children like? What do they want? What are they, what, what can they do? What are they capable of? And the last question, so what do we have to provide to uh, satisfy their needs? And it's quite easy. It's not that, uh, it's no rocket science is told, aren't you? Because everybody knows, especially if you're a parent or if you still have a good memory, you know how it has been uh, uh, acting as a kid. Yes, you're curious. You want to know new things you want to develop, uh, but especially you want to know um, how it is and even if you have small small kids 
uh, most question you're going to have to deal, uh, deal with is why? Why is it like that? Why? 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 So they're curious, they want to know. Uh, they live in a here and now, which is very interesting because if, um, as a football coach and, we're, uh, and, and playing tournaments and you have a loss, you carry this bag with you and not only a few hours, perhaps some days, some weeks, I have thoughts. But if you're a kid, you're thinking of it mostly two minutes, three minutes, and then the next game. It doesn't mean you don't, you still want to win that game. Uh, it's not a question of winning or losing, but it's still carrying the bag with you for a longer time. And if, it, if you're a child, it's not that important because the moment, the presence, that this is your life. And yes, children are egoistic. Yeah. You see it on the pitch. They want to have the ball and it's my ball. And they want to dribble and they don't want to pass, for example. <laughs> and they are adult related. So it's not the topic of today, but one of the most important topics, I think, at all, talking about the role of a coach. Because the way you behave uh, as a coach will reflect, uh, will, um, you know, Massive, massively have a, um, a you know, how do they build um, an impact on the kids? So we know, we know nowadays um, how it is and what it is like. And as I made this sheet, I have to, uh, I, did, I had to smile at the moment because I thought, okay, life isn't a line, life is a circle sometimes because. When I play with my colleagues, uh, we call in Germany alte Herren, uh, old men, it's quite the same. Uh, but the question why you started with football, for example, is almost uh, the same question at the end of the career. Because I do it because I like it there. It's fun, enjoy. Uh, afterwards, you drink some beer here in Germany, okay? But it's, it's nice. And that's why I go Fridays if I'm there. Uh, it, it isn't the reason why I wasn't here yesterday. So I'm sorry. Sorry about that. No, no. I had other appointments. Uh, but for me, yes, it's fun and joy uh, with the colleagues doing some sports. And it doesn't matter if it's football, but it's best if it's football. And yes, it's about moving. It's about ramping and trying. And it's about sweating and effort uh, because it's a good training session if yeah, I see, okay, there are drops of sweat on the floor. Uh, and I do. And for, especially for football, it's about scoring. Uh, it's about dribbling. It's about shooting and these experiences you have. And, for example, you want to emulate role models. And I had this experience with my daughter these days. My daughter is a bit older than my son. And we had dinner. And I wanted uh, her to try some sushi for the first time. And she said, no, no, no. I won't try it. Because I, said, I said, why? Because her favorite speaker on her daily podcast uh, said, no, sushi is not fine. She had to puke. So she won't try it either. Uh, so she's emulating her role model. Yes, uh, I don't understand everything why, but it's like that. So what are children capable of? What can they do? And it's also quite clear. Yes, they can perceive simple situations. This is, um, has a strong impact on how we organize training. Uh, is drill the right way to do it? I don't think. Uh, a game-related approach is, is, is possible because they know how uh, to solve situations. You can analyze and structure it, and it doesn't matter if it's a six-year-old kid or a 16-year-old kid. Uh, they are able to analyze it, so they are able to, to create these solutions and act in it, and they learn extremely quickly, but only with stimuli. If it's boring, you know, concerning also to fun and joy, no fun at all. So if we know it, if we know it, you have to ask yourself as an organization, okay, so we know what they need, what do we have them to provide them with. So yes, for sure, it's about age-appropriate requirements. And this has to be very, very different. As Angie said, uh, the 1% or even per promille, one of the thousand will go that way, another will uh, go a different way. You have, uh, in, in Germany, you start normally about four or five entering a club and playing football there. This is much more different than if you're 11, 12 and starting at a different level. So we have also to provide them with space to gather that experience, uh, combining it with opportunities for them, for motion, for moving around, and for development, because that was one uh, of the first things, or well, this was the biggest word I thought I saw 
on your first slide about potential and talking to you or asking your opinion about talent. And this leads all to successful experience we have to improve them with. So if we know these, we have to ask ourselves, okay, our football system, the way we play it in Germany now, are we fulfilling these needs? Now this is a reality check. Uh, one video uh, of a 7v7 game in the E uh, juniors under 8, under 9, uh, how it looks like. Okay, so what you've seen, all these points. The pitch is too big, uh, not all the space is covered. There are too many players. When my son started, they played 4v4, uh, which was very exceptional. <laughs> but still, you had, um, if you're observing it, um, just a square of three or three meters, nine square meters, eight, eight kids, one ball. I think seven of them have never seen the ball because there were too many persons inside uh, of the box so too many players. Um, only a few ball touches. Now you can say, well, it's one touch football, <laughs> positively speaking. Uh, but no, uh, it's one touch defending, perhaps, shooting a ball. You have a fixation on the position. You have seen the two defenders. Um, <clears throat> the coach said to them, okay, the middle line, don't cross it because you're defending. Uh, unilateral tasks, outside commands. You still uh, hear your parents, the coaches giving them the commands and experiences uh, you have seen three guys uh, of those substitutes and they're really substitutes normally they, they don't play uh, or at the end perhaps for a few minutes running on the outside <laughs> uh, and building up and uh, you say 90 percent of goal kicks starting from the goalkeeper so our system we have today doesn't satisfy the things we know children need so we had to change Okay. 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 So when you first ask yourself, okay, is it fun and joy for children? Is it really fun and joy? And you ask them, surprisingly, they would say yes. Yes, it is fun. Even those substitutes would say it was fun. And if you're asking them, okay, why it was fun? Well, there was uh, he told me funny jokes in the locker room. And afterwards, I'll go with my friends uh, home and, and we'll play with with some cars or, or build Lego. So that was fun. So the problem today doesn't occur in that age, but a few years later, when kids reflect and you have said, so how was the day? Well, today I didn't play. It was no fun. And honestly speaking, it was no fun the last few years. So I'll do other things. So yes, it is, but it's not for everyone. Only for a few. We have seen one striker. <laughs> he will have uh, seventy percent of the time. We will have the ball, and we do the most goals. The others will have fun too, but not because he, they are playing football. They have fun because they are together with their friends. Yeah, and later on, they quit. But that's what we see. So we wanted to kill two birds with one stone. Um, so we change, or we're trying to change the system we play today. Uh, this means this form will be, and that's the first time in our uh, history of, of the FA, uh, this supply system or a, 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 um, system of play, where here at the um, youngest G juniors under six and ever seven will be a nationwide mandatory from the season to 24-25, which means still uh, more than one and a half year. An interesting thing is, you'll be able, or there could be two more pitches, so you could be able to put 
10 pit, uh, 10 playing fields on one pitch. And so you can play from four kids up to 80 kids simultaneously. And why do I say two, uh, two birds with one stone? Because uh, we have very big differences between urban areas and rural areas. And in some regions, there are clubs which are saying, oh, we're running out of players. Uh, I've just four players, five players. I can't take part in the competition system where I have to be in a, in a 77 or 99. Uh, on the, in urban cities, on urban uh, regions, it's like that, that they say, oh, we put a stop on the memberships. There are too many, too many kits. We can provide them. So stop. And now it's possible if you have only four kits, for example, say, no problem. I come with four kits and I will play. And if you have 24, you can come with everyone. And you don't have to say, sorry, this time 10 will play. And the other times, perhaps uh, in 14 days again. So both poles uh, can be provided with a system to play. Stepping up, the F juniors under eight, under nine, up to seven playing fields on one pitch from six to 94. And as you see, we start with two v two, three v three, five v five, uh, also four v four, and one stepping up, six v six, seven plus uh, seven v seven, and everything is possible. Everything could be possible at the end. So, um, and we had a lot of studies uh, on this, and we know. We know why this is a better system. Uh, you sh as you know, what, what do kids want? They want to shoot goals? Yes, you have more shots on a goal. You have more school goals. You have more dribblings as they're egoistic and want to have the ball. And you have less passes, less passes, but more completed passes, which means successful experience. There you are. So... Let's uh, show what could it be like, a future check, or how it is sometimes in our uh, pilot projects. So normally I would have you to make, uh, to, to count the players, uh, but due to the time I said, okay, I'll give you the information. 72 kids playing there, uh, 3v3, 5v5, all on one pitch. And if you hear it, for example, compared to the reality check we had before, you hear the parents are applauding them and you hear the kids and not the coaches and not the parents. So we hope that it's how it could be like nationwide in two years. So we know studies, we know why it's good, but uh, we have seen your cheeks. So I have two um, pieces of the puzzle here too. There are two things we have to combine. The one thing is knowledge. We know many things about the way, why we should do it differently and why these things are better. But no child uh, is going to be convinced by knowledge <laughs> it's emotion and feelings uh, and the experiences so you have to combine these two things about knowledge which is important for example for parents if you talk to parents and you explain them why this is better because this was my experience first time i was um observing my kid playing and there were a few parents and i said what are they doing there what is it that isn't football and i explained it and they say okay now i see it now I see. But I don't talk to kids like that. I could talk to my son and say, hey, it's better for you. you can score our goals. And, ah, what are they talking about? No, that's not my point of view. So combine these two things if you want to convince people, especially coaches. <laughs> so also a small anecdote. Um, my son started at the age of four. Yes. So dad, can we go now uh, to the club, to the football club and play there? And I said, yes, okay, let's go. And we went there, and it's also a rural region, and it's a small club. And we entered the um, field or, or the pitch, and I saw, wow, this looks great. We're 20, 22 kids, four coaches. 
So this was my first view about 50 meters away. And as I proceeded there and went there, I said, okay, I have a typical German, I don't know if it's a German way, but a typical way of uh, behavior I see at coaches and it's like that. I don't know if it's taught uh, in the coach education, but normally you have two positions. One is like that and the other is like that. <laughs> so, and four of the coaches, uh, they had these positions. They were standing like that all the time and they didn't talk, they didn't act. The only one was acting. I said, well, what a waste of resources. And the other thing was the sound, the sound I heard. Because it was like, boom, boom. because they had the wrong, the wrong balls. They played with adult balls, with senior balls, too heavy, too big. And the last thing I saw was, oh, the training form. I don't think it will work out. And so it happened. Uh, my kid started, my son started, and after two minutes, the first ball hit uh, his, uh, his head, right into the face. Yeah, and he ran out and cried and said, well done, what a nice header. Yeah. So, so uh, try it once again. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, you could foresee it. Yeah. What happened three minutes later? Okay. Once again, boom, right middle in his face, a shot. Um, and ran out and said, Daddy, Daddy, I want to play handball. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, this was the first time. And after that experience, um, some days after that, I went to the coaches and asked them, okay, why did they do like they did? What was the reason? And the answer was quite simple because they said, we did always like that. So on the part of knowledge was, did you know that there were different uh, types of balls that are uh, light balls and smaller balls? I said, oh, no, you didn't know. But that's a good thing. Yeah, and I see. Uh, okay. Uh, and then I afterwards asked, you, you know what happened to my son? He want to quit football. It was the first time here. Bad experiences. Now about emotion, feelings has no good feelings about football. I, I pushed him again to football. But, um, so when I said, okay, yeah, now I see. Uh, and normally the coaches, they're acting in good faith. They're doing it on purpose, acting wrong, because they don't know better. Or sometimes the circumstances they're acting with and acting in aren't that easy. So parents and coaches are influencers. Not by social media or TikTok or Insta, just by being role models and talking to their kids and providing with them uh, with the opportunities or the surroundings they're acting within. So, um, if I pick up my son sometimes from a game or uh, from a training session, I'm asking him and not the thing, the most normal question. So, how was the score? Did you win? This is not the first question. First question is so. Tell me about it. How was it today? How do you feel? Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied with yourselves? Did you sweat? How did you push forward um, your, your teammates? How was it when, when the, uh, the other opponent scored? What did you do then? So you can influence them in some way to have a different view on football or on, or, or on reflecting their own behavior in a game. And then they can influence the coach. So it's a bottom-up process sometimes. But you have to be aware of it. And when changing systems, uh, as I told my, my daughter, now she's growing up and she wanted to rearrange uh, her room. And she said, well, daddy, I need, I need total new furniture. Uh, and so we went to Ikea and had also, for example, a new wardrobe. And I asked myself, well, why is Ikea so successful? What do they do so that it works? And it's quite easy. Uh, I call them the four IKEA, IKEA principles. Uh, the first time is simplicity. Yeah, normally uh, you have only just one tool, one screwdriver, or I have a hammer <laughs> most often, but normally one screwdriver, uh, something like that. And it's self explaining, and you have only some few rules. So, our uh, new models of playing are self explaining. If you experience it once, you know what to do. Uh, but still, it's, it's a complex system. Playing 2v2 is very complex, uh, but it's not complicated. So I think that's one important thing. The second thing is teamwork. Just doing it together makes it much more easier because if we showed coaches uh, our way and I talked, I talked to you, uh, it was the thing you said, okay, if you show them eight or 10 pitches, I said, wow, how can I do it? I'm alone. I can't, I can't do that. I said, hey, that's no problem. 
uh, you're just a team and you can involve other uh, participation is a big is a big theme so involve parents especially the mothers because i think they're the better youth coaches often or more often especially the youngest uh engage the players participate the players it's no problem uh, if my son can build up a lego thing and if i can build a, a ikea wardrobe it's no problem for a six-year-old kid to make a pitch with four goals and eight cones no problem and ask the other coaches of other teams to help you why not and other teams third thing is preparation if you're prepared it's much easier so it's easy to adapt to the circumstances that occur on the day you play if the other team has 24 players no problem you have 10 pitches if they have only five no problem they can play also uh, normally today uh, if you arrive at the, at the game uh, where it's played 9v9 sometimes okay and the coach uh, is calling in the morning if you're happy <laughs> if you have luck um often like that it says okay i'm sorry we can't play today because two of my players got ill uh, one went to a birthday and three didn't show up at all. So I don't know what to do. We have to cancel it totally. I said, no, you don't have to. Come with the plates you have and we'll play. And the last thing is support. And this is sometimes a big upset, obstacle. <laughs> Asking for help. Asking for help. And you have to look for partnership and strong partnership. This could be the regional federations, especially here in Germany, or academies, for example. Because sometimes you need testimonials. Uh, and I can go throughout to Germany and talk about that. And the first question is, oh, tell me, where did you play? Have you been a professional? I said, okay, that's not the point, but no, I haven't been. But if, uh, if uh, our national coach would say, this is the biggest thing we have, and that's great, almost everyone would say, yes, I agree, because he knows what's best. So these are the things I think which will help these principles, and you can adopt easily to your system. So... I don't know if Albert Einstein was a sporty guy. I doubt it, but uh, very nice thoughts. And um, what we do is often we're paying lip service. Uh, we know what's best, uh, but we are not acting. So if you want to, to change the th things, you have to act. Yeah. Because otherwise, you'll wait at the train station for a ship to come. But you have to be patient. All the things, I think, Chris, you know it best in Belgium. Uh, sometimes it takes a decade, uh, 10 years to see uh, if things work out. So be patient, but don't wait for, for another one to come to solve your problems. Act yourself. So thank you for your time.